jealous gold fangs when I talk, yeah. Okay. Bad bitch okay. named Leah said I broke her heart, yeah. Okay. And I ain't worried about the bitch. I just fucked the hoe and did I do? I just get the money, then I do. Ay, got them bricks for the flips. Ay, listen, my jealous gold fangs when I talk, yeah. Okay. Yes, that is fun dip. DJ Tone the Boss doing a feature with Trippy Red, and he is here with us, a murder musician. What's up, Tone? What up, what up? Appreciate you having me. I'm excited to be here. Yes, we are so excited to have you on the program here. Listen, I know a lot about you. Quickly give a brief little bio of what you have done for this music community. Yeah, so uh, some people, not myself, call me the king of Iowa. Uh, Mm -hmm. Iowa has been my home base for the last 20-something years where I started my music career. Um, And uh, I've kind of established a a pretty decent following out here. So, you know, Trippy is one of the latest of many features that I have, but I've worked with uh, Wiz Khalifa, Juicy J, Royce the Five Nine. And the list goes on. Um, in most recent years, uh, we do this uh, Iowa Summer Jam event. Brings out all the best artists all over Iowa. Uh, we also do the Iowa Music Awards, uh, which is founded by my company, T1 Entertainment. Uh, I'm also a DJ, so I DJ for all the colleges all throughout Iowa. And then, of course, uh, I do music. Um, last year, one of my songs was picked up by the WNBA. Um, they used it for their championship song. Someone from the Golden State Warriors then heard that song, and the Golden State Warriors used the record uh, last year when they won. Um, a lot of people challenged me to do something bigger than that, and this year um, my song Victory Lap was chosen by the Kansas City Chiefs and used for their Super Super Bowl parade. Oh, yes, it was Victory Lap. We have that here. You guys out there that are listening, Victory Lap is one of the dopest songs I've heard in quite some time. (laughs) Thank you. Tone to Boss, man, you really have put yourself out there and you've explored the world, the music community that is, and really got to see where you could take your music outside of regular streaming and the conventional ways of promoting your music or getting your music heard by the masses. Can you tell me a little bit about how you were able to land a, a gig playing your songs for the WNBA or the Kansas yeah, City yeah. Chiefs? Yeah, It's actually a funny story. Um, I had made an album. It was kind of, I had took some time off. I said, I've been doing music technically 20 years, but seven years of that. Uh, I, I settled down, bought a house, started a family, and I got more into the management side of music um, while working a full-time job and supporting my family. Um, It takes a toll on you. You know, the the pandemic came. Uh, In Iowa, we had this uh, natural disaster called a derecho, which destroyed my home. And, uh, yeah, during that time, um, and we're home working from home. uh, So the job got worse, lost my home, and then me and my uh, wife at the time split up. So I wrote this album. Uh, wow. <laughs> basically called Antonio Story. This is all 2020. So I write this Antonio Story album, and music really saved me, got me out of depression, and it, it really uh, helped a lot. So one of the records on there, like I, I had the track list before I even had the uh, the songs wrote. So one of the songs on there was called Give Me My Ring, and uh, it was basically going to be telling her to give me my ring back. Uh, but the album had so much focus on the relationship we decided, what if we made that an anthem? We need anthem or hype music. Uh, and NBA 2K was running a competition at the time. So we made Give Me My Ring an anthem. I uh, hit up my boy, uh, Ike. He's on the song, Ike Midas. And um, he uh, hopped on there. We made this anthem. We submitted it for NBA 2K. Got super excited and got denied. <laughs> so, oh um, no! Yeah, so we were discouraged, and you know the album was out though, and people loved the album. It got great reception. That was a lot of people's favorite song. And although it got denied for NBA 2K, uh, I got a message that it got picked up by the WNBA. And uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so Hell that yeah. that was the win right there. 
But, of course, you know, people are haters. So, you know, people are like, well, it's the WNBA. It's not the NBA. Oh, but, you know, that's still cool. But it's not this. It's not that. Oh, my god! And, uh, yeah, and I really feel like it was just manifesting in positive energy. But a couple months after that, miraculously, like, I don't have any connections directly to the Golden State Warriors. Like, somebody even asked, how much did you have to pay the Warriors right, to yeah. use your song? And it's like, bro, oh, that's <laughs> a billion dollar <laughs> organization like, I, I don't have anything to offer them but uh yeah they uh they end up using the song i uh i reached out to the videographer because i was like how did you guys find it and they were like we actually didn't it was recommended to us from one of the staff or uh team members on the warriors they heard it from the oh, wnba and yeah so uh they used that song but i still was like beyond thankful you know that they used it and yeah found every staff member that I could to thank them and actually built a relationship with a few, um, which, you know, I sent them some of my other music, like, Hey, if you guys have anything else coming up, you know, here's a couple of my songs. And I was like, that's cool. Never heard back. And then, um, you know, watching the Super Bowl the following year. And we, um, you know, even after I got the NBA, people were still like, yeah, that's cool. But what do you do now? It doesn't get any bigger than that. Unless you got like oh, the NFL. <laughs> <laughs> so we, we made the song Victory Lap with full intentions of getting it to the NFL somehow. It didn't need to be the Super Bowl or it didn't need to be, you know, it didn't need to be something crazy. We just wrote it for that. Or, you know, maybe Golden State was going to win again. Maybe they used, you know, the sequel song. Um, miraculously, right, I, huh? <laughs> yeah, miraculously with the Super Bowl, the way it went down, it, it, I, you know, one of those bad calls by the ref allowed uh, Kansas City Chiefs to win and changed my life because uh, that same uh, team that designed the video for Golden State Warriors were are based out of Kansas City. So, I, and I had already hit them with the music and they reached out to me within 24 hours of them winning the Super Bowl and said, hey, uh, those songs that you sent us, are we still able to use one of them? It'd be perfect for uh, the video we're making. That is amazing. It really is. Yeah. To, first of all, I mean, let me unpack that. I mean, the people that are hating on you because you're playing your song, your song's getting played on the WNBA and not the NBA or the NFL. Those people right there, they they have some psychological issues they need to deal with because that's a fucking amazing accomplishment. Really, exactly. it is because Especially you had explained. <laughs> yeah, like... a guy from Iowa. I mean, I'm in New York City. We have a little bit more connections out here. Iowa, I'm thinking cornfields. I'm not thinking anything yep. else except exactly. that. Yep. I'm not thinking DJs and music and stuff and, or, you know, music labels. I'm not even thinking that's not coming to my head. So for you to be able to really get picked up from that, it's, it's a huge accomplishment. I wanted to uh, ask you a question about the victory um, the writing for that song in particular. You said that you were had in your mind that you were going to be targeting the nfl or sure. that realm of you know listeners or listener fan base i'm very uh interested in writing processes that lyricists go through or musicians so what yeah. did you have to do in your musical writing abilities or you know your process rather to yeah. change from just writing a hit song or something that you know groove by or as opposed to writing it specifically for NFL purposes. Yeah. So for this record specifically, um, it was it was around the time of last year's Iowa Music Awards, which were, were the inaugural awards ceremony. Um, I had a ton of submissions coming in, and one of them was for this guy, uh, for producer of the year. Um, he reached out to me initially and just said, hey, Congratulations on the Golden Warrior stuff. I see you're doing the music award. I would love to work with you. Um, and I was like, okay, well, you know, I've already listened to your beats because you submitted for the music awards. I like what you have. Uh, let's set up a time to meet. Maybe we could do an interview or whatnot. And uh, I was like, you know, I got to get on to the next record. Uh, I'm trying to make another anthem. And the first beat he played for me was already named Victor. So, um, yeah, so the lyrics are already, like, the topic is there. 
Oh, uh, so he plays me the beat. I hear the horns. He's like, I got the perfect beat for this. We didn't have to listen to another beat at all. Once I heard it, I heard the marching band kind of at the beginning. I was like, oh, yeah, this is everything. It checks all the boxes. So, um, I'm a person that when I'm writing, I let the beat speak to me. I really, the words don't, you know, they don't really, I don't struggle for wording for when it comes to music. If we're having a regular right. conversation, you know, I got to <laughs> stop, think about it, backtrack. It might be a stutter here and there. But uh-huh. when it comes to music, it just flows. It, it's water to me. It's, what is this beat saying? What's the story? Um, with him naming it Victory Lap, I was like, okay, not only, um, you know, Nipsey Hustle, his, his big movement and album was Victory Lap. So I have to pay homage to, to uh, Nipsey Hustle. Um, my friend that was on the song Give Me My Ring, um, his rap name is Ike Midas. His real name is Michael Hicks. And we almost had a falling out because when Golden State used the song, they only acknowledged me. They only put Tone the Boss on there. So he's like, dude, I'm on this song too. Why is my name not on there? It's like, hey, man, I didn't submit it. I don't know how they even got the song. Mm-hmm. Like, I'm just happy they used it. Like, he's like, mm-hmm. yeah, but I feel like you're getting all the glory. So, you know, uh, what I did is I used his real name in the lyrics. I shouted out all the great Michaels, Michael Jordan, Jackson, Phelps, and Vic. Yes. Uh, I got my ring mm-hmm. now. Shout out Michael Hicks. So, like, I'm nice. like, okay, cool. His name is in there. You're yes. not going <laughs> to take that out. <laughs> He's getting in college, <laughs> and I'm putting him up there with all the other great Michaels. So, um, yeah. What else are you gonna ask for after you're, you're compared with Tyson and Jordan, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> so you know um, that all that stuff. I came back to the studio, recorded it, but the chant and actually my favorite part of the song is uh, the beginning. That every day we wake up and get it. Haters get mad because they see I'm winning. We're on the stage, we're in the building, arena's cheering, let's get it, let's get it. Uh, that part of the song, and, and there's also like a hoo, ha, ah, hoo, ha. Ah. Yeah. That stuff came from the producer. I'm in the studio, and he's like, I it just needs some type of chant at the beginning, and I need something else in the beat to kind of like give them a feeling of them in a huddle. So I'm like, okay, Ooh. the huddle, and that's where I came up with the hoo, ha. Ah. So he added that to the beat, and that was like exactly what he was looking for. And he's like, I just need something else just to, to hype them up right before they get to your hook. And he was like, can you do something like da da ba da ba da 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 And as he did that, I'm like, every day, wake up and get it. Hey, just get mad. And he's like, get in there. And we just came up with that yes. off of him making a, a random sound <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> and pattern. And the lyrics just flowed to me. So that was, uh, and it ended up becoming my favorite part of the song. And it catches everybody. It, isn't it magical when that kind of situation occurs when you, you know, you just, everybody's on the same wavelength, everybody's on the same page and they're kind of feeling that beat and that rhythm. And then when somebody makes a, yeah, just do a bum, ba dum bum, bum. And you yeah. have those words just pour out of your mind, yeah. right. Yeah. You know, onto the, it's onto the recording. It's beautiful. Yeah. It's it really like, it's is. not even you. It's, it's the magic. Yes. It's the experience. It's, you know, mm-hmm. it, it, it's something you can't really explain in words. You just have to, to have it and have that feeling and have that moment. Absolutely. Absolutely. I love the video that you did for Give Me My Rate. I, I, you were in the gym, I yeah. guess. And you're, you're <laughs> did you have to, did you have to do any, any, uh, preparation for that? Like stretching out, try to get in oh, shape, or did you just wink? We should have because we were supposed to pretend box. And I think he like, I might have accidentally jabbed him and then he hit me for real. So then I hit him for real. So then we were like really hitting each other. And the the directors get frustrated with us. Like, dude, it's pretend. Like, stop. All right. He's like, all right, get it out. Just get it out of your system. Do what y'all got to do. And then I need y'all to listen to me. (laughs) So we, we kept boxing for like, uh, at least four rounds of us just boxing uh, wow. <laughs> for no reason. That's impressive. And, <laughs> and then there's a scene where I'm uh I'm lifting weights like I'm on the uh, the weight bench where I'm I'm leaning back. I think it's like the Arnold mm-hmm. press. And <laughs> we shot that scene for like twelve minutes, and I had weights actually on it. I shouldn't have, and then I no. thought it was low, but twelve <laughs> minutes of just doing that 
and rapping. That's a long like, time. So my arms were so sore. So <laughs> we should have stretched. Uh, we should have listened on the boxing part or maybe not done a boxing team video. <laughs> yeah. I think that was fitting, though. It was oh, a beautiful yeah. video. It, it, it went with the, the song perfectly, I thought. And now that I'm listening to you explain the backstory of you writing that entire album, you said a lot of things were going on in your life, turmoil, obstacles, and you actually were writing that um, song about Give Me My Ring and yeah. as a message to your ex, yeah. which blows my mind because i'm cheering along listening to this song like you said it's a hyped yeah. up anthem and shit yep. you know yep. i'm waving my hands giving my ring like i'm a champion and yep. come to find out now it's about you know give me my my <laughs> wedding ring back hell yeah, yeah. That, that that says that says more that does more for me because yeah. you know i'm going through a breakup too so now i really fucking love that song let me hey. fucking blast in that shit down the block <laughs> <Right? laughs> give me my yeah. ring but <laughs> i got i got a whole album of this stuff and it, it it dives really deep like i didn't leave anything out from from our breakup and our relationship so i i go through the album starts kind of i give an overlay and then it goes dark uh i go to the you know beginning you know why i'm the way i am to you know seeing the silver lining that's about to come and it actually did come but i wrote it in a while i was in darkness to give myself hope so i wrote songs like uh you know one of them was called like stuck inside where i actually experiment with like some rap rock type of music because i'm stuck inside my head and going crazy you can't really express that well enough with rap so i do a little bit of rap rock on that record and then i got a song that comes right after that called free and that one talked about, you know, life after the breakup and after the pandemic, as I was still going through both of those things. And like, literally, uh, again, it's a manifestation because everything I mentioned that I was going to get in free and the lifestyle that I wanted for myself, I'm actually living it now. But I wrote it while I was like sad, depressed, drinking and <laughs> like crazy, mm -hmm. like and kind of going through it and alone because of the pandemic and people being sick yeah. like it was tough but uh yeah, yeah a lot definitely. of that that album manifested a, a lot of things so so let me ask you that then it manifested i i love when i talk to musicians i was just speaking to someone who was telling me about their album they were going through a lot of tough times too and then when they started writing they were letting out all of those emotions that were in their head that they couldn't okay. get out. And when they put that onto paper or made a record, then those things that they wanted for themselves started to manifest, started to mm -hmm. happen. And mm -hmm. I, I had, you know, proposed a question to him. Do you think that your visualization about those good things or the future kind of helped to manifest that? Or do you oh, think yeah. it was just a coincidence? So do you wow. think that by, by getting it, out of your head and out into the world that you were able to easily more easily ma have that manifest for you oh yeah uh, i I'm a, I'm a big believer in, in the universe and uh you know all things are connected um you know words you spell words out because words are spelled you know i i try to say things like grand rising instead of good morning because the word morning has multiple meanings and i you know, want to start on a, a positive yeah. note. <laughs> um, but I, I, I'm wow, really that's careful. Great. <laughs> yeah, I'm really careful about my words. I even do my best now, even in my music, to try not to curse. I don't need to, to curse people or, or expel any negative energy. Um, and a lot of good things happened to me, um, honestly, since the breakup and since being in this mindset. You know, one of the things that, you know, I, I, I'm a, a black dude in Iowa, but I'm a big advocate for yoga and it's just something that really saved my life. Like my mental health, I've lost a ton of weight from doing it. And it just gives me that time of day where I'm not focused on my phone, social media, or lost in my thoughts. Um, and I'm taking care of myself, my body and spirit. So, you know, it's, um, it's, it's, it's changed my life for sure. Uh, and one interesting thing, the guy that produced victory lap, he showed me uh, the documentary, the secret, for the first time like i, I found out everything oh what a great this. one yeah yeah mm -hmm. 
everybody not, in the not such a secret, huh? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, they kept the secret from me, I guess. But I was yeah. already living these values when he showed me this, and it just validated everything that, you know, I was already experiencing. Uh, one thing that I always say, and I, I still do, is I always, like, DJ a free event every month. And almost every time I do a free event, it ends up getting me two or three paid events. And that's not why I do it. I li- literally just want to help people. And, you know, not everybody can afford the services at the DJ rate. Right, but right. Um, every time I've done something like that or something positive, it's almost paid me back instantly. And again, it's not why I do it, but I just see it come true every time. So I'm a big believer in uh, the universe, positive energy, uh, speaking things into existence, and the law of Yes. Right. Yeah, absolutely. All those are essential in my opinion you know for a fruitful life and they're happy consequences like getting the paid gigs after you do something free you know because you're doing it not for that reason okay. but you're doing it you know to be a good person yep. and i believe like it sounds like you do also that when you put good out there you get good in return okay. and what you had mentioned about trying to reduce you know the number of curse words in your song or the the content Mm -hmm. is is what i'm really seeing in not just the rap community but overall in literature and everything as well also where it seems that the people that are writing these lyrics or books or poems are starting to really embrace the fact that you should be positive in what you're doing, not put people down, not have those diss rap records, you know, not cursing, putting down women. All of these things seem like they're turning, like a shift is happening. And I'm happy about that, you know, as a person, because I'm very positive. And um, it sounds like you are too. Mm-hmm. When you were mentioning the yoga, I really started my, um, <laughs> I got a light bulb in my head that just popped on. I was like, wow, yoga. Okay. I did martial arts for many years and it's given me a grounding and an ability to perceive the world differently. Yoga mm-hmm. does that for you? Yeah. Oh yeah, absolutely. It really, it, it just, it gives me that time that a lot of people, and, and I'm, I'm, I'm an overachiever. I, I stay working 25 eight hours a day <laughs> or mm-hmm. five, like eight, eight days a week. Like it's, it's crazy. Yep. My force time that's non-existent uh, right. to get things done. But yoga just, it, it, it shuts that down. It, it's that one time that you really just get to be selfish, but it's, it's taking care of yourself and appreciating, you know, the time we have on earth and the body that you're, you're given the vessel that you have and really just, uh, appreciating life <laughs> and yes you know, bottom line <laughs> going around is still going to keep going and you know if people need you they're going to have to wait <laughs> like this is you know my time you know i uh I'm, I'm, i started with yoga and i got into the gym a bit more and you know uh originally it used to be writing for me but i kept writing about the, you know the things that i was going through and the subject matter um is was my environment at the time so it's like, okay, I need another outlet. Um, and this outlet helps me physically as well, which also helps me feel better and I'm able to do more. Um, so yeah, yeah, yoga does that for me. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Yeah, that yoga is really going to benefit you in your musical endeavors too. Mm-hmm. You know, without even knowing it, you're balancing the energies in your body. You're aligning yourself with, the source, as Rick Rubin calls it, uh, you know, the the source of everything. You know, you got to tap into that if you want to be creative. And Absolutely. yoga, I find, is a way to get your body, your vessel in line with yep. that source. And I just, I love, that's why I brought it up and reiterated it. The yoga is huge, in my opinion. As a musician, you should be doing something, something. Not it has mm-hmm. to be yoga or meditation, just something to take a second to pause and realign your body and look at the world with fresh eyes you know we're very deluded in the society especially and i just really love it when i hear people like yourself talking about their processes and what they do outside of music to get prepared to write music 
Yep. So I I enjoy that yoga. And you do a lot of work. Um, I read about nonprofit work that you do Absolutely. also. Yes. So that's one uh, of my biggest passions. And again, the stuff that gives back, like just thinking about it now, and I've never said this out loud. And I just realized because I did like the Iowa Music Awards is something that I started because we had did music for 10 years. So from the year I was 14 to 24, we had worked our butts off and did everything we could from traveling to New York to living in Atlanta to going to LA and everything we could musically went viral several times and collaborated with the top artists uh, that were relevant at the time. And uh, we kind of, we just got older, we settled down and started having families and kind of bowed out of the game, but there was no award for that. You know, it was just hard work and it's just like, okay, cool. You did that. That's, that's great. <laughs> Carry on. Yeah. So, you know, um, I, at that time, I wrote a, a basically a 10 year business plan to start the Iowa Music Awards. And, you know, when five years came up, I started my business, T1 Entertainment, because I knew I need to establish a name, a brand and meet and network with as many artists as I can. And then the fifth year we did the actual music awards. Um, but what I'm getting to is, if it wasn't for me doing the music awards to give back to other artists, producers, et cetera, I wouldn't have met Lyrical, who uh, I did the Victory Lap song with. Uh, so that yeah. whole experience wouldn't have happened if I wasn't already doing something to give back. So that's just yes. me doing something positive to give to artists. And, you know, right now I'm running this nonprofit organization. Um, so we've been in the community for years just uh, trying to help kids, whether it's music, sports um or even just help parents like hey we'll take the kids off their hands for a couple hours you do groceries or you spend time with your significant other and you know we're going to teach them the things they don't learn in school you know i've taught dj classes we've taught uh core values respect and good sportsmanship um you know things of that nature uh we've even taught yoga and had guest speakers and people that create businesses come in and and talk to the youth anywhere from age five to 14 like we uh we really touch on those i came from a broken uh home you know i grew up with a single mom that had three kids and I ended up moving out when i was 14 and living on my own and stuff and luckily i found music so for these kids it doesn't need to be music but i want to make sure that they have a role model and they are encouraged to pursue their dreams and passions that's beautiful. That really is. I'm applauding you in my mind. Right? That really is. <laughs> Thank you. Like that's gangster right there. That's a true definition. <laughs> that that's balling right there because there is so much information that is not being taught to the kids in society today. That's just known, and the teachers aren't going to be stepping outside of their comfort zone or taking a chance to teach kids like budgeting. How about? balancing a checkbook yeah. things like that and then yeah. other forms of recreation like djing maybe there can be a student in your class that can express themselves or something that they're going through like a broken home or something like that that they're having trouble dealing with on their own and then you come along and teach them some djing skills and they find their passion and they're able to express themselves i think that that may lead to lower um depression rates and and lower you know murders there's so many benefits to teaching kids outside of the regular curriculum and i think that you doing that now it's only in iowa but i would love to see that spread across the country okay. and where could where can people find out more information about your charity charitable actions yeah on the so, t1 uh, entertainment site yeah so the nonprofit organization um is big bang foundation um, we Big have Bang, right yes. now uh, just started a new Instagram of Big Bang Iowa, so you can find us there. Um, Big and we'll Bang, be, we'll Iowa. be updating everybody, but yeah, Big Bang Iowa T1 Entertainment. I make sure I cross promote on each platform. So T1 Entertainment yeah. is the non or for profit LLC where uh, not only I do my music, my DJ, but I manage artists. I'm in the graphic design, uh, videography, photography. Um, I'm a part of the number one studio in Iowa, which is Soundbox Studios. So we record artists, we record.
Discord podcast. We're kind of like a one-stop shop for everything you need. And if we don't do it, I'm connected to somebody that does. <laughs> That's amazing. So any of the musicians, artists, uh, people that want to be on podcasts or do podcasts, they could actually, what, rent studio space from you? Rent time? Yeah. In the they, can rent, That's they can rent studio space to run their own podcast, or I also interview artists, small business owners, and music creatives of all sorts. That's great. I mean, there's so many people out there that would love to have their podcast sound more professional or their music be mastered maybe in a recording studio and they don't have the you know finances to do it. People that are offering these services are definitely you know, a, a, an essential component to producing music or getting your podcast out there. So that's a hint, hint, wink, wink to everybody out there. Get in touch with them. All of all of Tone's um, links are going to be in today's bio of the episode, so don't worry if you didn't catch all those. So <laughs> I I really I'm, I'm having a great time talking to you. I want to, if you have a couple more minutes, I want to dive into a little bit more as far as like your emotional um, self, like so 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 all of your emotions that you're going through. Mm-hmm. How do you? bottle them up and put them into a medium like music or lyrics. How do you, do you have a process where you really like sit down and try to put them out or you just let it flow? Yeah. Um, I do a little bit of everything. I can either hear a beat and let the beat talk to me, or I may have some thoughts going through my head. Like I just explained to somebody that I'm always writing. Like even this conversation is giving me, you know, new topics to write about or new content, or I might have come up with a bar or two. Um, so I can just, uh, I can go off of how I'm feeling for the day or an experience that I have during the day, how angry, but like, let's say I'm, I'm in a situation where I get angry. Like my favorite group growing up was G-U. Um, so that gangster rap, that New York sound, mm-hmm. everything to me. So nice. I actually reached out and landed a mixtape with DJ Who. So I have a whole wow. unit mixtape that I'm sitting on, um, and I, I've sat on it for a, about two years now because it's just not who I am anymore, mm-hmm. and I'm oh, at okay. that angry stage. Um, but right. I have it. I'll probably release it to the world here soon or make it available on streaming platforms. But I just kind of go over all the old uh, G-Unit beats, give them updated bars, and you know, uh, really kind of pay homage to the group that inspired me to rap. Um, Wow. so uh that's yeah. that's impressive and that's 50 yeah. cents dj right dj will yeah yep yep and yep. g unit yeah yeah that's, so that's i got a whole big awesome. tape with them uh we've dropped a few records from it that's, that's done pretty good numbers but uh you know again it just doesn't really reflect where i am in life right now or who i am as an artist um one thing about me though is like you know as an artist there's different you know you get to it's kind of like acting you can play different characters you can, uh-huh. you know, have different emotions that you express through your music medium. So, uh, gangster rap is something that I love going to when I'm angry. <laughs> you know, I'm I'm not yes. a, a street dude. I'm very nerdy, honestly, and and into uh, <laughs> you know, I got a degree in computer science, but I'm like this wizard with words. So, <laughs> you know, I, I I can really do that. And I was also born in Chicago, so I was exposed to you know a, a lot more than most kids should ever see. Um, so yeah, I, um, I have that kind of music for those situations. I can throw on a beat, get through it and then act like nothing else happened. Go back and focus on my day after I finished writing it. Or if you put me in the studio and I'm around other talented artists that inspires me, I write something on the spot to any beat, even if I'm not going to be on the song, I'll write something stored away for later. And then when something else comes up, I'll have that ready. Yes, that you know, it sounds like music just encompasses your life. It does. <laughs> that that I mean, there's there's musicians out there that really let their emotions speak through their music. I have delved into your catalog of music, and I have felt the emotional content. I was a little bit confused with that that "Give Me My Ring" song, but now that that's squared away, I understand. <laughs> <laughs> I understand where it comes from. I was like, "Yeah, did he write this song just for that?" 
So what I was, I was, I was asking you before you answered perfectly, like you got your emotions out in your medium and that's very important to, to pause for a moment and, and realize that you're able to take your anger or, you know, that, that type of emotion and put it into gangster rap. Now that's kind of what I feel people that are dealing with broken homes, you know, um, you know, it's just situations that are not conducive for bringing up a child and the kids find gangster rap and they're able to express themselves. That's great. But you were able to differentiate between, you know, your regular life and then writing these lyrics, you know, yep. pausing and putting a stop like, OK, like that's the way I felt. And yep. I got to get on with the rest of my life. Exactly. And it, it, it even it even spelled it out two years later. You're sitting on this mixtape because it's not who you were. Um, it, you know, that's that's an important piece of information to stop and look at because i think that kids let you know their gangster mentality overflow into their regular life so was this something that that you had to learn the hard way or you just you yeah. know no set, i, I yeah. learned it the hard way and that's again uh, and somebody even broke it down to me as a, a child my, my first job my mentor there told me like dude if you keep rapping this way you're speaking it you're speaking it into existence but you're also kind of manipulating yourself you know you're telling somebody oh if they do this i'll up the strap or i'll do this and i'll do that well then you get put in that situation in real life you've wrote about it you spoke about it you listen to yourself saying it you know how to react based off of what you wrote down your lyrics you end up living them and i was in a situation at a young age where i did something very dumb like i you know i listen to who I was in my head and in my lyrics and in my music, but I'm smarter than that. And, you know, I, I, I made a bad decision because of that. And, uh, you know, people got hurt and that's, uh, you know, that's, I, that's something I definitely yeah. regret and, you know, I, I can apologize. So I'm blue in the face, but the, the, the message behind it was, this is the kind of energy you're putting out there, even into your own head that this is what you're supposed to do and you know better. <laughs> so even yep. knowing better, when you repeat something so often, it becomes a part of your life and it, it, it's kind of, you, you fall into it. You, you fall into the trap, <laughs> as they say. Yeah. And uh, that's exactly what I was bringing up right there because we were speaking about that particular manifestation of what you're thinking about and writing about coming to fruition, you know, happening in your everyday life. We were yep. just speaking about that in the beginning of the show. And that's why I brought that up because people need to know that you can use that, but you yep. have to be aware that maybe that gangster stuff you're talking about may actually come to, you know, real life and you have to deal with those situations. And, you know, in your head, it's kind of like make believe it's kind of, fictitious yeah. you know you can you can play saying. around oh this isn't real i'm just doing music right. and then i'm putting that situation it's like you're gonna react the way that you you've taught yourself to react <laughs> you've already hyped yeah, yourself exactly. up <laughs> <laughs> so you know now and it's the... like okay look at what we have look you know I've, I've got two daughters now um so i can't risk throwing my life away for anybody else you know i can't um let my emotions put me or jeopardize them by any means, whether it's me making money or my freedom, I can't allow my emotions to get the better of me and, and take that away from them, not even myself. So oh, yeah. no. now I'm able to look at that and make better decisions. Absolutely. Yeah. It's decision making, really, that is the telltale of how your life is going to play out, really. You know, it's all about decisions that you make. We're all, you know, brought up to make difficult life-changing decisions that time and it's really important to have a little bit of information before you make a decision or advice and i feel that we could find those pieces of information in music do you ever go into writing a song saying i'm gonna you know have this as a message to the young folk or something like that oh yeah Definitely. Yeah. I, uh, I, I mean, I, I just did a song for my daughter for my upcoming album. Uh, it's it's going to be called Black Ricardo. Um, but I did a song for my daughter and I had her just on the beginning of it. 
and uh, it's called That's You awesome. Save Me. And uh, you know, I, I what that what's the name of the song? It's called You Save Me. You so, Save Me. Yep. And I, I got a little snippet out. I didn't actually release it to the world yet, and I will. But uh, nice. just you know, it pays homage to her, but it also talks about how a kid can save your life and you know, kind of put you in the right direction. And uh, it's although it's my dedication to her directly. You know, I, I wanted to also speak for other people. You know, I, I know I'm not the only one whose child has saved their life. Um, but it's just having that appreciation. Um, me and her have performed it together all over the state. And people go crazy and cry. So and awesome. Us after. You know, she's only How eight old is she now? Old. She's eight. only eight. Yeah. So, you know, her getting on stage and knowing the words or us just like kind of dancing together. It's. It's quite the moment and experience. Oh, that must be amazing to watch. Yeah. Oh yeah, <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> That's so cool. She must be, you know, you know, beside herself having time of her life doing that with her dad. Oh yeah. That's great. Yeah. It really is. So going forward, Tone, what can we expect? So you're going to come out with this album you just mentioned. Um, yeah. You saved me as as a song. So what are we expecting from you in the future? Yeah. So, uh, like I said, I, I've got to get, I've got to give the people what they want. So at some point I'll be releasing this, uh, the unit mixtape. Um, it'll probably yeah. just be like YouTube, SoundCloud, audio max, because I do go over, um, beats that I don't have the licenses to, <laughs> um, you and know, we'll do it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, there's something cool that we talked about. I think before, uh, going live is our, uh, my hats off song. You know, we did that. That was just one night yes. at the studio drunk, having fun. The, the, Montgomery brawl had just happened and it's just crazy entertainment but uh we wrote the song and uh he was like we should remix Future's Mask Off and I was like well then we can't release it to streaming platforms and he's like well I think there's a sample in there and we found the sample he redid the drums and everything and we made our own version of Hats Off and that went viral on TikTok but that was like we dropped that within 24 hours we did that on a limp that wasn't a a plan, you know, situation. Something came up. That was in response to the August 5th? Yeah, yeah, yep. We call it the Montgomery Brawl. <laughs> so, nice. You know, we did that record and shot a video a couple of days after. And, you know, that's been doing numbers. And then, of course, we got a uh, fun dip that's out now with Trippy Red. So uh, I got an animated video and a lyric video on the way for that. Um, not only do I have a full album, I've got, honestly mixtape and i've got two albums just in store ready to go but i'm all about strategic planning so before dropping the next album we're shooting a short film i actually just received a grant from the state of iowa um in order to shoot this film so we're gonna uh shoot this short film it'll be on like 2v we're gonna shoot for either netflix or amazon prime um as well but um uh, we're working <laughs> we're working we can't stop won't stop that sounds amazing. You have a fucking chaotic life ahead of you. I do. <laughs> yeah, but but it but it sounds to me that you're enjoying your life, having a yeah. really good time, you yeah. know, enjoying it with your family and your friends and it it just it shows in your music. You can hear that you're having a good time, that you are genuine and authentic. So I employ everybody out there to go out and listen to his music and watch those YouTubes. I love that video that you did. Give me the ring in the gym. That was so yes. great. And now hearing <laughs> you talk about it was even better. Man, it's been amazing talking with you. Now, I want you to think hard about one piece of advice that you could give to emerging musicians coming up in this digital music industry. What would uh, it be? I mean, outside of something cliche, like, I mean, mm -hmm. it really is key. Uh, but, but don't chase dreams. Have several sources of revenue and income that support your dream. Uh, don't quit your job right away. And that's not an insult on the don't quit your day job. Use your day job to support your, your music business. Music should be looked yes. at as a business. And you as an artist should be looked at as a brand. You should protect that brand. You should invest in that brand, but also be consistent. Don't get discouraged because your first
friends, your friends aren't listening and sharing like that. That stuff comes later. Uh, you'll have more supporters or more support from strangers than you will have from your friends. You know, if your friends are one thing, you have your friends for the reasons they're your friends, not to make them your fans or customers. But make music towards your target audience, find who you want, uh, who you identify with, and uh, keep going. Don't stop. Um, I, it took me 20 years to get something as big as, you know, the Golden State thing happened, and it was unexpected, and it was after, you know, somebody denied and told me no. <laughs> so it, it can happen to anybody. I'm just a small guy from Iowa. <laughs> so but, <laughs> King but, of so Iowa. I, what are you talking about? <laughs> You're the king right. of Iowa. Yeah. <laughs> But yeah, DJ telling the boss, man. <laughs> yeah. Thank you so me. much. For sure. For sure. Like that that was such great advice for everybody out there because you got to understand it's not an insult to say don't quit your day job. It's reality especially in this society where inflation is rising every fucking day. So yep. <laughs> don't quit don't quit your day job. Use that money mm-hmm. to invest in yourself. Yep. Like DJ Tone said you're a brand, you know, just like Nike and Coca-Cola. Yep. They advertise, they promote themselves, and it costs money. Mm-hmm. So you need to have some sort of revenue coming in unless you're signed to a label and they're paying for the stuff. You know, chances are you're paying for it yourself. And a lot of musicians today, they're independent, and that's great. You know, but you don't know what's involved with being an independent musician until you're already in the music industry and you find out you got to pay for promotions and pay for, you know, airtime and pay for studio time. (laughs) So you need money. (laughs) So that's great advice. And thank you for not giving us the stereotypical (laughs) answer you know oh yeah yeah you know uh you know you gotta you gotta practice your your riff and just gotta grind out music theory music theory (laughs) so so many people (laughs) told me you just gotta grind and it was the most annoying Uh, advice i ever got the worst how'd you get this but at the end of the day i kept grinding and it worked (laughs) yeah and and takes a while people have to be patient also musicians be patient you know, you'll get your chance to shine and the universe will unfold in a way that will give you at least an opportunity. You'll get your chance to, to come out and swing away. You know, you may not hit a home run. You may strike out, but at least the pitcher will throw you a ball. And that's what will happen. So be prepared and invest in yourself. I, I love speaking with you, DJ Tone Du Bois. All of what you said is going to be going through my head every time I listen to your songs. I love Fun Dip with Trippy Red. Thanks. Now, do you have a relationship with Trippy? What's up not with you and Trippy? Not at all. Not at all. <laughs> that, that was with luck and networking. Networking is everything. But basically, we yes. were in contact with like an old manager of his. And he's like, man, I've got some unreleased Trippy verses. If you want to negotiate a price, I can throw you something. And we make it happen. And he uh, played us. Uh, a few songs and we googled and made sure they weren't out anywhere and took our time deciding on what part and which song we were going to use and we found the uh the bars from uh fun dip and he's like let's do that and, uh, it cost me everything i had and i don't yeah. regret it <laughs> i honestly don't regret it it's uh it's helped well, how me can become you? the yeah. number one streaming artist in iowa uh that's like not signed or anything uh, king of iowa yeah. <laughs> and I think it's opening more and more doors for me every day. Yeah, definitely. It's an investment. I bet if you didn't have a job, you wouldn't have been able to afford that. <laughs> exactly. See, it all it all comes together in the end. I, yeah. I love how, you know, you, you're very honest with that. A lot of people would have just been like, yeah, me and Trippy are boys. We cool. We <laughs> yeah, me and Wiz are smoking on the weekend. <laughs> That's not the yeah, case, he though. Charges, uh, he charges 100k for a feature right now, and uh, so what I'm doing is that we're going to do an animated video and a lyric video because I don't have 100k laying around to pay him right. to uh, show up for music. <laughs> <laughs> wow, a hundred thousand dollars for what a verse? Yeah. Yep. Wow. Yeah. Holy shit! That's <laughs> a lot of cash. So. 
Yeah, keep working at your nine to five. <laughs> <laughs> but that's an investment, and it definitely puts you up in the charts in Iowa. You give you a little bit of a, like national exposure, also. Yeah. And you know, we're hoping, I'm hoping, you're hoping that this next album, EP, whatever you're dropping, is gonna further your fame a little bit more. And T1 Entertainment is your company. And you're available for DJ events. You're available probably as a consultant too, right? Oh, yeah. I do consultations all day. One of the things I just got, it's funny, I had these fines I had to pay off and uh, didn't have another gig for about a week. I tried to take a little time off. And uh, miraculously, I I don't keep track of when my BMI checks are going to come in, but I got a BMI check that covered all of my fines uh, the day that they were due. So, um, I help people now like set up real PROs or, you know, uh, set up shows or come up with a rollout plan or social media management. Um, I'm really inexpensive and, you know, I, I try to work and talk to everybody, um, and just kind of say, okay, here's the things you need to do. What do you want me to do for you or just help you with directly? Or, you know, did you just need pointed in the right direction? Like, where are you in your career and how can I further that? That is huge for musicians out there. You should definitely take the time to have someone beside your immediate friends and family consult and give you advice. Yeah. I know that you don't even charge that much money to do this service. Yeah. There's consultants yeah. out there that charge hundreds and hundreds an hour or a hundred thousand, but, but you're, you're out there. So people can just inquire on the website, get in touch with him. He can help you level up plain and simple. Absolutely. That's what you're, you're there to do. It's been great talking to you, Tone. It really has because now everybody has more of a backstory about who you actually are. You know, behind the music, behind the scenes, you know, we see you on the videos, we hear you on Spotify or on Apple, and now we got to hear you firsthand. It's been great talking to you, Tone. Thank you. This was an awesome interview. You're amazing. (laughs) (laughs) It's brought some stuff out of me that I normally don't don't reveal to the world, so I appreciate it. I love doing that. (laughs) That's that's my, my talent. Thank you so much, Tone. And everybody check out his links in the bio. Go to T1 Entertainment. Um, Look for DJ Tone to Boss. Fun Dip. Great song with Trippy Red. Check it out. Thank you.